Okay, uh, let's get started. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Kuniuki, working for AWS. Today, I'm going to talk about our Simproxy implementation using kernel module. And this, the subtitle here is the question from the kernel module owner, that man, uh, and this drove me to the combat it with BPF. Before talking about our Simproxy, I'll explain about SyncRookie implementation here in Linux and what the problem is. And then I walk you through how our Simproxy works at scale. And finally, how we can use BPF to rewrite it. <clears throat> Basically, TCP connection establishment is stateful and the server has to keep some state of the client. However, under DDoS attack like Simfrading, it's painful to allocate some memory or CPU resources to the managers connection request. So sync cookie is used in such a situation not to allocate any resource for a connection that does not complete through a handshake. The server encodes the client information into SYNAC, and which is called sync cookie, and they decode the same information from the ARC. This way, the server need not keep any state for the malicious connection request. <clears throat> so the same encoded value in the SYNAC must be extracted from the ARC, and the Linux kind of uses two stages for sync cookie. And the first one is the initial sequence number, which is four bytes value. We can get the same number from the ACK because the client acknowledges the ISN and the return ACK where the ISN plus one is the ACK number. So we can decode the client information from the ACK number minus one. And the second stage is the timestamps option. TCP timestamps option include two timestamps, TS value and TS ECR, and both of them are four bytes. TS value is the timestamps of the sender of the packet, and the TS ECL is the last timestamps from the peer. So basically, the TS value in SYNAC is echoed back in TS ECL in ACK packet. Okay, next, let's see what is encoded in the SYNAC. First, ISN is generated by this function following the <coughs> old age formula. And five information is used to calculate ISN. First, four tuple is used to calculate two hashes, and client ISN is added to that ISN. And also, MSS is included in the ISN. The data here is the MSS, but it's not actually the MSS. Uh, the data is an index of the an alley MSS tab that has predefined MSS. So here we find an MSS from the LA that is close to, but less than the original client MSS. And the system timestamp is also encoded into ISN. The count here is a timestamp of the cookie, and it is calculated based on Jiffy's so that the timestamp increases every minute by one. This value is checked when validating arc and if the cookie is generated more than two minutes ago, then the connection will be aborted with reset. And finally, uh, two secrets are used to calculate the ISN. The argument C is the index of the sync cookie secret, which is used for SIP hash. And the secret is initialized only once for the first sync cookie after boot up. And the same secrets will be used for the following sync cookies. So ISN will be formatted like this, and it's summation of three 32-bit values and includes four tuple client ISN, MSS, and a system timestamp and a secrets. When receiving ARC for the sync cookie, the kernel calculates the SAD hash from the ARC and the ARC number minus one and it checks if the timestamp and MSS index are valid or not. Next, we'll see what is encoded in the timestamps option. In timestamps option, the kernel uses only the lower six bits to encode the client information. So the value is initialized with the usual timestamp and the lower six bits are cleared. And then, uh, depending on which TCP functionality is available in the connection, and 
the corresponding value or flag is set to the lower bit. So the timestamps option will be formatted like this. And as you can see, this value has important information related to TCP performance, like window scaling, selected back, and ECM. To summarize, the Linux kernel encodes this information into ISN and a TS value. And as the drawbacks of sync cookie, these two points are often mentioned. Precise MSS could be lost, and if the client does not support timestamps option, window scaling, selective arc, and ECN cannot be used in the connection. And there is one more drawback. <clears throat> that is, the sync cookie contains host specific bits, like GFIs or random number. These values are different on each host. So let's say host A and host B are placed behind load balancer, and a sync cookie is generated by host A, and ARC is misloaded to host B. Then the only host A can validate the cookie, and host B cannot. So the ARC is responded by reset from host B. So the sync cookie in Linux must be generated by the same, uh, must be validated by the same generator. <clears throat> And this is for security, and but it's actually a downside for uh, in a point of view. <clears throat> so that is so sync key is not stateless in network. With sync key, the server itself can remain stateless. However, the intermediate node between the server and the client still need to keep some state for connection. For example, firewall need to track the connection and the load balancer need to remember for the ball. This is the problem of the same cookie. Now let's go to the next section. <clears throat> and one of our services is capable of solving multiple terabytes per second in large regions. So there could be much more unwanted resource allocation by attacker. And ideally, uh, only the validated packet should flow into our network. So to reduce unnecessary resource consumption in network, we needed scaling sync fraud protection that works at the edge of our network. And we have decided to use SimProxy. Basically, SimProxy handles the three-way handshake instead of the backend server first. Then the server, uh, the proxy uses sync cookie. And after three-way handshake with the client, it initiates another three-way handshake with the backend server using the decoded SIM packet. Before building SIM proxy by ourselves, we have defined three tenets for SIM proxy. The first one is to reduce the SIM, SIM fraud to manageable level. And the second one is never sacrifice connection quality. And the third one, this is the most important thing. The SIM proxy must remain stateless for scalability. The Linux kind of provides out-of-the-box SIM proxy features like NetFilter or BBF, but these features are <clears throat> all uh, stateful. So we cannot use these features for our SIM proxy. Because uh, these features really see the same sync cookie infrastructure in Linux kernel. So the sync cookie will have the host specific bits and the misloading scenario can be applied here as well. Let's say SimProxy node A generates in cookie and its virtual IP is reassigned to SimProxy node B. Then ACK will be routed to the node B, but it cannot validate that cookie generated by the proxy node A. <clears throat> then the connection will be aborted. And also uh, the conventional SimProxy must manage IS and mappings. So let's focus on the sequence number in two CNAC packets. In the first handshake, the sequence number is C, and which is generated by the SIM proxy. And the SIM proxy initiates another handshake after the three-way handshake with, uh, with the client, and, <clears throat> oh, sorry, initiate another handshake with the actual server. And then the sequence number generated by the backend server is not C, 
So all the following packets have weird sequence number in the client's point of view. To be transparent, uh, same proxy must fix up the sequence number and ACK number in the all of the following packets. So that means the same proxy node must manage state for the connection. And if the proxy node is down, all the connections through the node are also terminated. So the conventional same proxy is stateful and thus hard to replace and does not scale. To overcome these shortcomings, um, we use different cookie format and a kernel module at the backend side, server. And I will explain step by step. So first, what's encoded in our ISN. We use only ISN for sync cookie storage and do not use timestamps option because some of our customers disable timestamps option for security reasons like not to expose system time. And <clears throat> so we only use the ISN for sync cookie and the ISN includes the availability of selective arc and window scaling. So we can keep connection quality without timestamps option. And MSS is also the encoded in the same way with the Linux kernel. And the most important, in, important part is the hash. Hash is calculated with four tuple, client ISN, client TCP option, etc., and lowering salt. Lowering salt is a random number which is updated periodically. And the rolling salt is shared by all the proxy node. So it means that any node can generate and validate sync cookie statelessly. For example, if node A and node B generate sync cookie for the same connection, then both values are the same one. Thus, both node can validate the cookie. So the misloading scenario cannot be applied here. And after the three-way handshake, sim proxy forwards ACK within the decoded sim packet, like TCP in TCP. So the forwarded pack, forwarded sim includes the ACK as the payload. And the following operation is delegated to the kernel module at the backend server. So sim proxy need not waste sim ACK from the server, nor keep any state for the connection. And when sim packet comes into the server, the kernel module hooks at net filter and extracts sim packet from the TCP in TCP packet. Then it feeds the sim packet to the TCP stock. Then the kernel generates sim hack. Of course, it has different ISN with the sim cookie. So the module drops the sim hack and it looks up the connection socket for the, from the TCP hash tables and a full simply rewrite the ISN with the sync cookie value. Then the original ARC extracted from the TCP and TCP packet can be used to complete through a handshake. So here is a summary of how our stateless sync proxy works. The ISN does not expect it to be rewritten after initialization, however. So this is dirty hack, and it, it's basically unsafe, but now it's working fine. And however, uh, we Amazon Linux kernel team provides many version of kernels for internal teams. So maintaining this kernel module is getting harder for the owner and the kind of modules owner was looking for a way to maintain the functionality more easily. And that's why the team asked the first question, like, is it possible to rewrite ISN with BPF? And of course it's no. And I was thinking how we can drop the dirty hack. And this is the basic idea. So if we could validate custom sync cookie and create connection from it, we need not rewrite ISN unsafely. And moreover, sim proxy need not forward the decoded sim packet, and we can simplify the flow. So I suggest adding a functionality to validate and obviously act with BPF. 
And the first question will be where to invoke BPF program. ACK for the default sync cookie is processed like the right diagram in the slide. When it's come to the TCP stack, first a listener is looked up for the packet and later cookie v4 check or cookie v6 check by data ACK and our catalog SSK and configure it based on the decoded data from the ACK. So the BPF program also need to access TCP header to validate the packet and configure request socket to set MSS and enable other some features. So the cookie v4 check or cookie v6 check uh, was a natural point for me to hook BPF program. And actually I did in the version one patch set. However, uh, Martin at Meta suggested to hook at earlier point so when the packet comes in, we can validate the ARC at TC. And if it's valid, we can call kfunk, the allocates request socket, and configure it based on the argument and set the socket to SKB. Then in the scat lookup function, we can steal the listener from the request socket to enter the cookie v for check. And in cookie v for check, we can skip the validation if SKB has request socket. And the next, uh, I will explain how to use the kfunk and then how it works in details. So the BPF program will look like this. The program looks at TC when a packet comes into the host. <clears throat> and first, uh, the BPF program checks if the packet is ARC and it looks up socket based on the packet. And if the socket is listening socket, the ACK could be for the sync cookie. Then uh, we can pass the packet and validate it. And if the packet has a valid cookie and we can populate struct TCP cookie attribute, which will be used in kfunk to set up the request socket. Then finally, uh, we can call kfunk to assign a new request socket to the SKB. The argument of the kfunk is SKB, a listening socket, and the dedicated struct, and its size. And the struct TCP cookie attribute has two members. Most of the connection attribute can be expressed with uh, available TCP options. So we can reuse the TCP option receive the struct, but it does not have ECN attribute. So I added a Boolean value to express ECN availability. And this struct could be extended in the future for other attributes like TCP microsecond timestamp, which is added by Elik at Google. So then an older program compiled with the old struct information definition could pass an initialized struct to the kfunk. So we need to check if the pass struct size is the same with the current definition. That's why this struct is packed. Otherwise, the Boolean value will be counted as full byte, and we cannot detect the new member. And next, let's look at uh, kfunk. It allocates a request socket, but it does not hold any um, left count of the listener. So, but request socket need to be tied to the listener so that later we can fetch it in the socket lookup function. So if we need to flee SKB, we need to create a listener before fleeing the leaker socket. Otherwise the listening socket to left count is wrongly decreased. So, and this socket can be differentiated with sync cookie flag, which is currently not used in the Alex, <coughs> the uh, receive pass. So in the receive pass, if the sync cookie flag is one, it means the leaker socket is allocated by kfunk. And kfunk initialize a request socket based on the argument. However, uh, here it is not free initialized. For example, the ISN will be set later in cookie v for check. And finally, kfunk set the request socket to SKB and also set SKB's destructor with sock p3. And in sock p3, uh, as I mentioned before, we don't hold listeners of count here. So if SKB is split, we need to unlink the listener from the request socket 
otherwise liquid SK3 would actually decrement the listener's count. And later in the INET lookup SKB, we call the INET steel sock. And there we need to return our listener so that we can go through the sync cookie validation function flow. So if request sockets sync cookie frag is one, we return its listener. The notable thing here is we do not clear SKBSK so that it can be carried to cookie v4 check or cookie v6 check. And finally, uh, in cookie v4 v6 check, if SKB has SK attached, it's the request SK allocated and partially configured by KFunk. So we complete initialization here and create a full SK later. And this way, uh, we can validate an optimally sync cookie with BPF. So this is the last slide. To summarize this presentation, sync cookie in Linux is stateful and thus not scalable. And also it sacrifices performance if timestamps option is not supported by client. But with BPF, you can create your own cookie. And so you can build stateless and escape scalable sim proxy. That's all my presentation. Thank you for listening. Questions, comments? Uh, have you had a chance to compare this PPF implementation to your kernel module in terms of like performance, QPS, and? Uh, so we haven't actually compiled our PPF module, so I haven't uh, measured the performance. Okay, thanks. What's the status of the, the, the second version? Uh, is it uh, yeah, so I was I wanted to post a V2 before this presentation, but there was some conflict in the net tree and a VPF next. So, but now I think there is no conflict, so I can post the V2 this week. All right, I just didn't see it, so I was wondering whether it's just me or <laughs> it didn't come out yet. All right, no more questions. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.